Today I want to take a look at some essentials, some basics of the Sale of Goods and Supply of Services Act 1980. So let's take a look. The key and significant point to understand about the 1980 Act is that it implies certain terms into every contract. So whether the contract is for the sale of goods or the supply of services, certain terms are implied. In relation to the sale of goods, one, the seller's right to transfer ownership, that is, that he has good title, is implied into the contract. Two, the goods shall correspond with their description. In other words, there's not going to be some sort of a switch and bait situation where you describe one thing and supply something else. A third implied term that's implied into every contract, courtesy of the Sale of Goods and Supply of Services Act 1980, is that the goods will be of merchantable quality, except, except where defects were brought to the buyer's attention or defects should have been noticed on examination before the contract was made. Merchantable quality then are essentially goods which are fit for the purpose intended. The fourth implied term into every contract with regard to the sale of goods is that if there's a sale by sample, there's an implied term that the bulk will correspond with the sample in respect of quality. When it comes to exclusions, in relation to the sale of goods, any term excluding the implied terms will be void where the buyer acts as a consumer. However, where the buyer is not acting as a consumer, then there can only be an exclusion where it is fair and reasonable. This would be the situation where one business is buying from another business. The first business or the vendor business can exclude certain terms provided they are fair or the exclusion is fair and reasonable and obviously the purchaser, purchasing business would have an opportunity to negotiate and say no I don't accept that or yes I do accept that. When it comes then to the supply of services the implied terms are one the supplier has the necessary skill to supply the service, two he or she will provide the service with skill and diligence, three Materials used, if, the, if there is any materials being used in the provision of the service, will be sound and reasonably fit for the purpose, for the purpose intended. And four, where goods are supplied under the contract, they will be of merchantable quality. When it comes to an exclusion or a variation, where the recipient is a consumer, the implied terms can only be excluded where it is fair and reasonable to do so and only if the exclusion is brought to the attention of the consumer. Where the recipient is not a consumer, then the exclusion clause can be used by a course of dealing between the parties or by usage or indeed by negotiation between the parties who obviously, if they're both businesses, should be able to negotiate satisfactorily and competently on their own behalf. Other consumer legislation that you must consider, if you have any issue, would be the Consumer Protection Act 2007. There is a European Communities Misleading Advertising Regulations of 1988. There's European Communities Regulations of 1989 to do with the cancellation of contracts negotiated away from the business premises. There's the Liability for Defective Products Act of 1991. There's European Communities Regulations 95 and 2000. There is the Consumer Credit Act. There is the Package Holiday and Travel Trade Act. And there's the European Communities Regulations 2003. I'm Terry Gorry. I'm a solicitor in Enfield in County Meath. I hope you find this brief introduction to the Sale of Goods and Supply of Services Act 1980 useful. If you do, you might give us a thumbs up down below because it gives me a good degree of encouragement. Thank you.